Next we're going to combine a bunch of the earlier lessons together to create a ring solitaire. And so a lot of this lesson is going to focus on workflow, which just basically means building a project from start to finish. So practicing using the functions in a little bit more of a practical sense. So to create a ring project, the first thing you want to do is choose your finger size. So I'm going to load my ring rail in my top 11 menu at the very far right. I'll choose a finger size. In this case, maybe I'll choose a size 6. And I'll hit the green arrow to select that. Now I want to work in the through finger viewport, so I'll double click to maximize that viewport. And I'm going to load my center gem. I'm going to do that by going to the gems menu and then selecting the very first function, which is gem loader. I'm going to shift my menu up a little bit higher. I'm going to select a round brilliant gem. And I want to load a 6.5 millimeter round brilliant, so I'm going to switch to the second tab and then find 6.5 right here. Then I'm going to click on that gem to load it. Now before we create the head builder, I first want to move this gem above the finger rail. And I often do that by a particular millimeter size. Sometimes I'm not sure if the gem will remain at that given height, but I've got a couple of numbers that I like to use to start off with, and then I might adjust it from there. To move that gem, I'm going to use the gumball. So first of all, I'm going to load the gumball in the info and settings section, and I'm going to highlight the centered gem. I'm first going to move it to the inside of the finger rail, so the table is going to be approximately flush with the inside of the finger rail. And then I want to move this up, again by a specific millimeter amount. And so to do that, I'm going to click on the move arrow right here. So I'm going to click on it one time, and then I'm going to enter a value. And for a one carat gem, I often begin with a dimension between 6 and 6.5 millimeters. So in this case, I'll type 6 and then press enter. And then that's going to be the height that I'm going to begin with. So with that gem raised up above the finger rail, it's highlighted, so I'm going to load the head builder. I'm going to do that by pressing F6. I'm going to pin down the F6 menu, and then I'm going to find head builder. And the first thing I want to adjust with the head builder is going to be the head drop to ensure that it goes all the way through the finger rail, like so. I think maybe I'll play a little bit with the head angle over here, and maybe put a little bit of a bend, so the top angle I'll adjust a little bit. Let's take a look at the prong size. So this is currently at 1.1. Let's say that we're okay with that, but let's say that we want to adjust the profile of this bottom rail to be square. So in order to only change the bottom rail, we have to switch to level three, where the rails are independent from each other and the top and the bottom of the prongs are independent from each other. So I'll click on the button for level three and then click on the bottom R. Then I can change the profile shape by clicking on the profile selection button. Then out comes the profile library, so I can reduce that size a little bit and move it to the side so I can see a preview. I'll put that onto square sharp. I'm going to press enter to finish and just take a look right here that our head setting is eventually going to get cut through for the finger size, meaning that all of this metal thickness right here is going to be cut away. So for the inside right here, this is going to be left quite thin. So to ensure that this has enough thickness after we cut through the finger, we're going to increase the thickness of this bottom rail. Now when I do this, I prefer having a millimeter size in mind that I want to shoot for. And so before I cut or before I increase the size of that bottom rail, I want to first create a line to work as a guideline. So I'm going to create a polyline. So I'm going to move my matrix stack down a little bit and then go to the curve menu and select the first option, which is polyline. The command line is going to ask us to choose the start of the polyline. So I'll choose my finger rail right here where I have a mid snap. So I'll click to define that. And now before I choose the next point of the polyline, you can define the length of your polyline by a millimeter amount if you type it. So if I type right here one, notice it's gonna show up in the command line. I'm gonna press enter to accept that measurement. And now if you take a look, the green line is only extending by the given value that I entered. You can adjust that value if you wanted to, if you maybe then said I wanna actually have a thickness of 1.2 for the bottom rail, so I'm going to make my guideline 1.2. You can enter 1.2 on your keypad, and then remember to hit enter to accept that number right here. And now our green line down here has increased to 1.2. I'm going to make that one millimeter again, so I'll hit one on my keypad and then enter. I want that guideline to be vertical, so I'm going to hold on to shift and make my second click. And then finally, I'm going to make this a horizontal line. This is just so that I can see the guideline a bit easier. Then I'm going to click and then press enter to finish using the polyline tool.
So now we have a guideline so that we can tell when we thicken this bottom rail how high we should increase it up to. So to go back making changes to our head builder, I'm going to highlight my head. And then in the F6 menu, I'm going to choose head builder. It's gone back to level one, so I'm going to go back to level three to only change the bottom rail. I'm going to click on the bottom R and then increase the rail Y size, which is the height, just until we hit that guideline right there. Now we're not going to have a snap to help us go exactly to that line, but I'm just going to make it approximately up to that point right there. And then I'll press enter to finish. Now we're finished with this guideline, so I'll highlight that and delete it. And so now let's take a look at this head setting from the looking down viewport. So I'm going to switch to my looking down viewport in full screen, and I'll make this shaded. I like to check this viewport to make sure that I can't see metal from that top rail that extends beyond the size of the gem. Here I would say that we don't really have that issue. I'll go through how to correct that issue just really quickly. So I would highlight that head, go to head builder, and now I would want to have independence between the prongs and the rails, so I'd click on level 2. I'd click on the R. Now here I have a yellow square, but it's over top of the handle as well, so I actually can't adjust it. It's going to be the rail X offset. So I'm going to switch maybe to the through finger viewport. And so then right here we have our rail X offset. So if it was sticking out too far, we could see metal around the gem. We'd use that just to pull it in a little bit closer to the inside of the gem, making sure to not go too far. If you go too far, you can make it so that your rails are no longer in contact with your prongs. So I want to go just far enough that I can't really see excessive metal or any metal that extends beyond the size of the gem. To finish making changes to your head builder, press enter. So now our head's complete. Let's save our work. I'm going to do that in the perspective viewport. So I'm going to highlight everything and then save that into the, my job bag number 12. And then we'll continue by creating a shank now for this setting. So to start creating our shank, we first have to load some profiles. To load our profile, I'm going to use the F6 menu. So first I have to highlight my ring rail. And then in the F6 menu, we're going to find Add Profiles. Now I'm going to adjust this profile a little bit. I'm going to make this bottom thickness here maybe about 1.8. I'll make my side width right here, let's say about 2.5. I'll change the profile shape. So I'll choose maybe this profile 02, which is a bit of a half round. Let's say that we want to have some other profiles at the very top so that our profile can change from one profile to another. Maybe it's going to increase a little bit in thickness or in width. But another reason why we want to have two profiles up here is that we want to leave the center left empty so that we don't have to cut away the inside of the shank or leave the inside of the head filled in. So I do want to adjust the position of this profile, but before I do that I want to make an extra copy of it. So I'm going to use the command line to do this. I'm going to hit add. That's going to make our profile blink, which means that we have a copy on top of here right now. So we can take the position on curve and adjust it. I can hit mirror, which is going to create the mirrored copy on the opposite side. I'm going to adjust the placement of this profile so it's going to go slightly inside of the rail. Now if your profile gets stuck on a snap, you could hold on to the Alt key if you wanted to. That's a little bit of a shortcut to ignore your snaps as you hold on to Alt. And let's say here that I want to increase the thickness a little bit. So I'll make the height, let's say, 2 millimeters, and I'll make the width 2.8. Now when you're finished adjusting the profiles, hit Enter to finish. Now we can see right here that my profile has not gone far enough into this bottom rail. So I'm going to highlight this profile, I'm going to finish the selection, and then choose MSR. And now to make this adjustment, it might be helpful to have your through finger window also enabled. So I can zoom in closer here, so I can see its placement along that finger rail right there. But I'm going to make the adjustment in my perspective viewport, but just keep my eyes over here until my profile is about halfway through the size of this profile right here in the bottom rail. So I'll adjust the position just about right there, and then I'll press enter to finish. I'll go back to full screen in my perspective viewport so I can do my sweep. So to do the sweep using F6, I'm first going to highlight my finger rail, then I'm going to find sweep one history. I'm going to go up to the command line because here we have closed equals yes. And I want to switch that to say closed equals no. 
And now we have to take a look at the direction of these arrows and define where the sweep is going to begin. So I'm going to choose my first profile right here. Just follow around and the sweep is going to continue to this bottom profile and finally finish at this last profile. The command line now says press enter when done. So I'll press the enter key and then there's our sweep. And now if you wanted you can make some adjustments to these profiles. I think I'm pretty happy with that. To finish the ends you could do either a profile cap if you want to have a slightly rounded end or if you just want to make this end have a flat cap to make your shank into a closed poly surface then we can highlight our surface and then go to the solid menu and choose cap planar. Now as a final step we have to make our head builder fit to the finger rail. It's currently going inside of the finger rail so it's going to not quite fit properly on the hand and to cut any object that's going inside of the finger rail, in this case we have a head builder that's going inside the finger rail, you can use a particular cutters function called cut to finger rail. If you highlight the head setting, you'll see that we have the option available at F6, or if you pay attention to the color right here beside cut to rail, you'll see that that's found in the cutters menu, and the icon looks like this right here. So I've already highlighted the object that I want to cut through for the finger rail. So I'm going to go ahead and begin the function now. And then our head setting has been cut for the finger rail. Now finally I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and just take a look at our project in the presentation mode. And there's our finished project.